Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Chinese University of Hong Kong, attending the United College Distinguished Visiting Scholar Lecture in 2011 to 12. Before the lecture commences, may I have your cooperation in switching off your mobile phones, pages, or other beeping devices, or have them turn to silent mode, please? The United College Distinguished Visiting Scholar Scheme is made possible by the generous support of the College Endowment Fund. Under this scheme, United College is able to invite world-renowned scholars to Hong Kong to give public lectures and meet staff and students of the college and the university. This year, United College has much privilege to have invited Professor Herman S. Jones from the University of Miami as our Distinguished Visiting Scholar 2011 and 12. Without further ado, I would like to turn the floor to the moderator of today's lecture, Professor Christopher Leung from the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences of the Chinese University of Hong Kong to introduce Professor Herman Cheung and the topic of this afternoon. Professor Leung, please. Good evening, classmates and colleagues. It's my true honor to have the opportunity to introduce Professor Herman Zhang, who is an extraordinary academician, an inspirational mentor, and visionary leader. Professor Zhang has been the Knight, James Knight Professor for 15 years in biomedical engineering in the University of Miami. He's not only a professor in biomedical engineering, he also holds professorship in medicine and orthopedics. He holds three professorships. His expertise and research in stem cell therapy, vascular medicine, cell-based therapy, and many others research in cellular and molecular biology has received numerous international accolades and awards. Professor Zhang has received more than $30 million in U.S. in his research projects. Professor Zhang is exceptional, not only being a very serious and successful academician, he is also an inspirational mentor and collaborator. We are fortunate in the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences to work with him on a number of stem cells-based projects aiming to achieve therapy treatment in patients with blinding eye diseases. His lectures and teaching are always mesmerizing. I think Professor Zhang has been very, very friendly to CHK, to our classmates, to our students, and we are indeed very privileged to have him today to speak with us on advances and challenges in stem, space, stem cell based regenerative medicine. Let's give Professor Zhang a warm welcome. Thank you. Can you hear me? OK. Th thank you, Chris. Uh, I hope I don't disappoint you with all this flattering kind of uh, you know, introduc introductory kind of statement that you have. Today, I'd like to share with you in terms of what I have done in the past 10 years or so, meaning that really I'm getting in this field uh, a lot later than you think. But at the same time, too, we make up by working much, very hard to get achieve the kind of things that we got to achieve. So I'd like to share some of the excitement and some of the things that we are interested in uh, doing so. Uh, this is a textbook. I'm not trying to sell my textbook, okay? <laughs> so I gave a copy to, uh, to the head of the college itself, 
and it's an ebook, so you basically you can copy anything that you want and things like this. And actually, have a connection with the eye hospital because Professor Pang and Professor Yam, uh, Gary Yam are co author in one of the chapters that I have. So, in some way, I uh, I have a deep feeling for Chinese University because they always participate in the kind of thing I want to do. Uh, before we talk about what stem cell can do, let's look at what are the current therapy that we use and ask a very simple question, can stem cell replace this technology or can improve on this technology itself? If you look at the current therapy itself, we have autograph, allograph, sinograph, man-made material, and devices. Now, what are those? Autograph is basically take tissue from one location of the patient to another location. In many cases, like uh, burn, skin burn. They try to you know, take a piece of skin from your buttock to do your face or things like this to cover the thing. What's the advantage of this? The advantage of things that is very successful, normally it's not being rejected, it's from you, okay? What is the disadvantage? The disadvantage meaning that you have a second wound. Right before the face, and now you are you are facing in your buttock to, 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 to have heal. At the same time, it will cause pain, and also the doctor loves you because they will charge you for it. Autograph. Autograph is basically taking tissue from an from a donor or from a cadaver to do that. Okay. Now, what is and transplant in the patient? The transplant technology have moved uh, come a long way, so the rejection process is a lot, uh, have been handled a lot better than before, but it still face a problem of rejections. And the shortage of donor, you know, in, in America, uh, most of the donors are from white people, from black people and Chinese, you get a piece of people, a, a piece of tissue from Chinese, forget it. <laughs> okay, so you have an ethnic kind of problem that you have, it may not match, okay. And the other thing too is also you have to a long-term kind of uh, anti-suppressing drug, um, which is, could be uh, not a very pleasant thing because by taking those, you're subject to other diseases, infection. Sinograph is perhaps the most controversial one. Okay? The first successful one is, I don't know if you remember that or not, I think you're probably in kindergarten or high school uh, or uh, primary school, is a transfer, uh, uh, tran uh, uh, transplant a baboon heart to a patient waiting for a heart transplant in Loma Linda, California, okay? And the patient survived for 14 days and died before they find a suitable uh, uh, substitute for human. But nevertheless, that 14 day, we learned a lot of things. Meaning that in a push and a shove, in a very emergency situation, there's a chance you can do that, okay? Now at the same time too, the transgenic animal te technology that we are making now, and become, I think, long, not, not long from now, we will be able to use that. Now, don't forget, one of the most successful uh, 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 transplant, uh, X-plant, is uh, pulsing heart valve, the visual heart valve. Basically, it is from pig. And there are more than 150 people alive today uh, with a damaged heart valve because of pigs, uh, with a pig. So that is a precedent that we look at. So I think that in special situation, it will be fine. But then, again, ethical issue as an animal study and possi uh, possibility of uh, uh, diseases that can, that can jump from one species to another species, which you heard of, like uh, uh, swine flu, okay? Or that kind of thing, you, we don't know. Those are the kind of things we have to con be concerned about. Mammic material, perhaps, is the most successful one, of the, okay? The reason for that is basically is the orthopedic surgeon can tell you that they can put a steel bar in your body or artificial joint when you have arthritis and things like that. They work well. What's the problem? The problem is the fact that the material itself always have a half-life. They, they subject it to fatigue, meaning that any kind of good, a good example would be a, a famous football player in the United States, Bo Jackson. Okay? Bo Jackson is a football player that damaged both of his hip. Then go and have, uh, get a, a hip replacement. And the doctor told him that you're, you're young, you're, you're, you're healthy, this will last you for your lifetime. Two years later, he come back to the doctor and say, it doesn't work. Guess what? He went to play professional baseball. Okay, the thing just broke. Okay, so now he got a second transplant, then he, be, then he have to sit on the, uh, the wheelchair for the next two years. 
okay? But that is something that ignorance in that sense, okay? And the other thing too is the biggest problem with artificial, artificial tissue do not grow with you. Meaning that when you are 14 years old, okay, you are 18 years old, you weigh 125 pounds, that's how much I weigh at that time. If I receive a, a hip, by the time I'm 40 years old, all the good old American hamburger, I weigh 180 pounds, okay? And then that thing won't fit, <laughs> okay? Or the young people that are 17 years old, and then when they get older, they get taller and things like this, so it doesn't fit. So that, it doesn't, it, unlike a, a, a natural kind of uh, thing, so it grow with you, and mold or things like this. So that is the defect. But nevertheless, it's a very important uh, uh, thing. Now what, can, what is stem cell? People talk about stem cell, okay? The general definition is very simple. Cell renewal, that define life, meaning that they can divide, they can survive, and things like that. They are either unipotent, multipotent, or pluripotent. Unipotent, that means that they can only become one thing. A good example would be, would be blood cells, the blood stem cells. They only can become blood cells, okay? And all your special organ, your small kind of stem cell, do you so warm up stem cells like brain tissue and things like that, they are, they are a unipotent. They can only become something. They should be called uh, progenitor cell rather than stem cell because they are not really stem cell basically. But the potent is like is from isolated so-called uh, MSC cells uh, from mesenchymal stem cell, and they have they can become mesenchymal stem cell or become ecto, uh, ectoderms. Okay, now pure potent is really the gold standard. The only one can achieve that before was stem embryonic stem cell. Now today I'm going to talk about some of the things that a new technology now the so-called induced pure potent stem cells and also direct uh, things or isolation of embryonic stem cell-like cells from adult tissues. So there are a number of new things coming up that could be very interesting to know. They also can be so-called immortal in, uh, in vivo, not in vitro, because it because depends on the culture condition. They are no such thing immortal because it will, you, you, uh, it will cost you too much money to, to keep them alive all the time. So pretty soon you can buy Mercedes-Benz with all the cultural media you use. Okay. What is the role of stem cell in a, a normal organism? Okay, they play a very important role in terms of in a different situation. During the phase of growth, they are contribute to different kind of tissue. In this case of damage, then you will find that actually in your bloodstream, there are circulating endothelial cell, progenitor cells and also MSC cells that replace small damages that you have. Okay. Now we talk about the king of the hill. Embryonic stem cells, also the first stem cell isolated by, uh, by people. Uh, there was, I, I never forget that. I was in University of Wisconsin at the time when they, uh, uh, when they come with that. Uh, uh, Jimmy Thompson, who is an uh, uh, embryologist, and he wanted, he, at that time he worked on chicken. He can tell you, uh, he wanted to understand a, a very simple process. At what stage did the embryo develop to the extent that the cell become committed to a to different tissue? So he wanted to look at the embryology of development, okay? Then he know how, how, how that worked in chicken, but he wanted to know about human. So he went to a, a, a fertility clinic in which people actually donate their egg and sperm to, to, make babe, uh, to make in vitro fertilization. When people go to in vitro fertilization, they usually go and donate, uh, the, uh, uh, get the uh, physician to inject hormone for them. They can collect maybe a dozen or so or, uh, and fertilize egg. And then they use either the the husband sperm or uh, donor sperm to fertilize them. If the, good, if the doctor is any good, one is enough, or maybe twice, okay? Then you have leftover eggs that nobody use. Then up, after one year, they usually flush down the toilet as a, as a medical waste. And J Jamie Thompson is a very enterprising person. He just goes to say, oh, you got to flush the toilet, can I have it, okay? So he uh, obtained the, from, uh, the, the uh, permission from the, uh, from the donor, and then he fertilized it. Uh, with sperm of unspoken uh, uh, resources. They have been claimed that he is one that owned the sperm, okay, but he denies it. <laughs> so I, I never asked him more than that because he won't talk about it. Okay, so basically, once you do that, then basically they can, they can, they can get fertilized and start to do this. Then you see the process itself is basically the embryonic stem cells are derived from the so-called the blastocyst. At that time, it's the buckle ball stage. It's about approximately 100 cells. The inner cell... Oh. Oh. 
I have here. This? Oh, okay. Then you look at basically it's a so-called inner cell mass is the one that two embryonic stem cells. Then the isolate them, they be a so-called proof point because they can divide all three germ layers. Okay. The epiderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. That basically make up all the tissue in your body itself. Now, the potential uh, uh, embryonic stem cell is almost boundless in the sense that like, they can almost uh, divide any kind of tissue do you have. But what are the shortcomings? The shortcoming is two. One, obviously, is the, the right to life or uh, 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 poor life. Uh, people argue for the fact that you destroy an embryo, which is also a human being, basically. Okay. So in America, it's a big deal because we have a lot of poor life people. Okay, and then Catholic also at the same time too. The second one is the fact that they are also have a potentiality to, produce, to form teratoma, undifferentiated tumor. Okay, that becomes a big issue because they can come to you and say that uh, if I decide to get a, a, a transplant, they say, oh, Dr. Chung, I got good news for you. You get a new heart, but the bad news is you get tumor. So I don't feel I want to hear that. <laughs> okay, so pretty much that was a problem, okay. The second one that we have, so the stem cell become a very interesting thing because they try a different kind of animal model to get cure paralysis and things like this. But if you look at all the clinical trials in the United States, almost 99.99% of the clinical trials that try to use on human beings are all using adult stem cells. But because of the concern about ethical issues, because of the concern about tumor formation, but the silver lining is the fact that in 2009, Jiren was the first company that applied for a clinical trial to NIH using embryonic stem cell. Okay? Now, they have a remarkable insight, okay, which I will touch, I will touch upon that, that point again. The remarkable insight was the fact that the reason embryonic stem cell is, can form tumor because you inject it in a human under the microenvironment, they become anything they want. They don't take any order from anybody. They want to become what they do. They're almost like an 800-pound gorilla in your home. They can sleep anywhere you they want. They want to be in your home and kick you out of the house. Okay. So what they did is they take the embryonic stem cell and induce them to form a so-called progenitor cells. They become a neuron uh, progenitor cells. And by that time, they are already lineage committed. So when they do that in implant, none of the animal they they try 60 and some animal do not divide, do not uh, uh, form teratoma. Big, big, big observation. Okay, so they get the first one. And then later on, uh, a, a company called Advanced Cell won the FDA for a particular treat of progressive form of blindness called Stargard um, uh, uh, macro, uh, uh, dis, uh, uh, dystrophic. So that's why I'm in my eye hospital all the time. Okay. And then later on, in January this year, they won the FDA to approve the use of embryonic stem cell to treat uh, macular degeneration. So that means now the embryo stem cell, by the very observation that Giron had done to make them lineage com committed cells, they are now can be used. Okay, that is a big thing. Okay, now but still they still have to face the whole issue about how to generate them by getting the cells from embry embryo. So the pro life people still not forgive them yet. Although Obama, the first thing he did was the fact that we peeled the order from uh, Mr. Bush. Okay, so after many court issues, now it have been as of. Uh, uh, July, uh, it had been approved to use. Now, the first thing that you'll find that now California, uh, uh, like every, every, every time in the United States, always lead the, lead the union. They joined the landmark of using embryonic stem cells. That they have actually trial on human now. Okay, they are so-called phase one trial. Phase one trial is not using the stem cell to cure a patient. It's to use the stem cell in the human to, for, for safety issue. So they have tried to inject it in mice and things like that, they won't form total tumor. So now they try to put it in human. If they form total tumor, then nothing, you know, it's good for mice, but not good for human, okay? So that go, that go to the neighborhood, basically. So, but it's a very big thing that we now find that indeed that have been used on human now. Now that become a very interesting thing. There are actually people trying a different way of making embryonic uh, stem cell. 
try to avoid the issue of trying to get uh, 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 things like that. But also raise an issue about a very interesting a new technique called so a technique being uh, done in 2000, about 2000 called somatic, somatic cell nuclear transfer. Or well, somatic nuclear transfer is you take an egg and fertilize egg, and fertilized egg have a nucleus that contain a single copy of your chromosome, 23, not 23 pair, single copy. And then in order to form, to, to, to form an embryo or fertilized egg, they need the other half from the sperm. Okay, so what they did was the fact that they take that egg, remove the nucleus, okay, and then they take the patient, the same patient, the woman, uh, skin fibroblasts, and they take their nucleus, which is a dip point, they contain a, a, a complete set of chromosomes, put that into that, okay, and then use hormone to induce them. Okay, so they will form embryo. Okay, so why is this so controversial? It was controversial because it opened up the whole story about human cloning. Because you're basically using the patient cell diploid to make an egg. You don't need any more man. That's no fun. Okay, so you said your, your wife said, I don't need you. I, I can do my own. I'm going to take my skin and do that. And so, you know, what's, you know uh, nobody wants that, okay? So, but that whole story become a very big story, okay? Thank God for one thing. It's the fact that, there's, that this technique, the so-called somatic uh, cell transfer, uh, nuclear transfer technique, is very good on, uh, on animals' study, okay? In fact, uh, Dali, the, 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 the sheep that was cloned in, in Scotland, was using this technique, okay? But in humans, for some reason, they die after a couple of times. They, for some reason, they don't, they don't work well. Okay, but things are changing. Okay, like every science, that really you give them a, a challenge, scientists are always trying to find a way to overcome it. Okay, we just published two months ago in Nature, 2011, that what a, 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 a Nago a group, what they have done is very interesting. Okay, what they did was they take the same egg, but instead of removing that uh, that. That, uh, that single copy of uh, uh, DNA from the egg, he leave it there, and now he put another egg, uh, put another cell that contains diploid. What happened? You have three sets of chromosomes, right? You have a, 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 a double set from the, from the donor and one set from the egg. For some reason, they grow beautifully now. They can fertilize and become beautiful. Okay? Now, and this is a human cell. This is the first time. So the newspaper just hit the, hit the ceiling. Now human cloning is possible. That caused an uproar. Okay, it says, oh my God, you know. But what people do not really understand, you all can know that now. How can this egg be useful in, in, in clinic when you have three sets of chromosomes? You probably have a son that have two head, one and a half head, you know, then you don't want to do that, okay? So, uh, and that's really, right now, still so called, this is one of the challenge. This is a science fiction story. It, it works, but at the same time, too, there are a lot more things that have to be done before you can do this. A thousand cell. This is really, uh, 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 really something that we have to be very proud of, okay? Because the thing was, if you look at all the clinical trials, all the things that we have tried so far, 99.99% are a thousand cell, okay? The adult stem cell can, be, can, you know, the first one to come out, so-called MSC cell. They, are, they find that in bone marrow. Now you find it almost in, in a number of tissue in your body, especially fat, okay, edible tissue. So as long as you're fat, you have plenty of stem cells. So that's why I'm always getting a couple more pounds so to keep my stem cell uh, source uh, ready, okay? So, but they have basically can become uh, really a so-called multipole. They cannot join. They cannot generate all three germ layers. They could become a mesoderm, an ectoderm, and very seldom endoderm, which is the most difficult one to, uh, to do, which is like liver as one, okay, and then beta cell to produce insulin. But the other thing too, adult stem cells tend to be not growing very well in, a, in vitro, and they usually age, meaning that if you transfer them, they become less and less potent. Now, MSC cell, basically, that, that's why I said, because that was, I'm not too worried about this, in the sense that, like, one of the things that are very important about uh, this source of stem cell 
is the fact that you're plentiful in the, in the body that work. The other thing, too, is the fact that they are literally a source of multi-cytokine uh, growth factors, which turned out to be very important that we really did not realize that how important that is. It turns out that when you inject it in a human, the repair in the tissue is not just a stem cell itself. It's a really a cytokine they secrete that promote the surround the, the resident cell to become more uh, to repair. Okay, so they act two, They have two. Fun, they have two actions. One action is the cell themselves become a source of repair. The other one is secrete cytokine to induce the cell around them to uh, to, to 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 multiply and take over. Edible tissue, basically. Now, why is MSC cell cells so popular? The first observation, they have a property called homing. Okay, they actually can inject it in, say, you have a heart attack, a damaged heart. You can inject the cells in blood vessel. Next thing you know, they all go to the damage area. They home in the damage area, which is fantastic. That's okay. Okay, but there's oversimplification. That was original observation. Subsequent reading, especially from uh, 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 the person that, that, that reported that originally is our, our director for our stem cell institute. Okay? Now we look at the state more carefully, 80% of the cells they inject in the bloodstream end up in the lung because the lung just cut, filter them out. Only 20% go to the heart. Okay? Now in the cell, it doesn't make you think about that, but you think deeper, there's a whole story to be, make, to be made. Okay? Because 99 patients that you have a comorbidity, they have more than one disease. Okay? So you have multiple diseases. You don't know what you, you know, the, the cell will go to different kind of damage area, just not a heart. Any more study, you can do it, damage your heart. Okay? The other thing, too, is the fact that when stem cell in the lung, what do you think they're going to do? They can form, and if they want, they form a piece of bone, they form a, 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 a piece of cartilage in your lung, God save you. Okay, something. So now the new technique now is avoid the issue about injecting in the bloodstream. It's in directly injecting the damage area to solve the problem. And like I said, they produce a lot of cytokine, which is a source of very important healing power. The other thing too, they are immunoprivileged, which is very important, meaning that they suppress immune response. They do that by interacting with T cells, T cells, dendritic cells, natural killer cells, and B cells. By doing that, they actually suppress the, the, uh, the response, which is a very important thing because whenever you have most of the disease, it's a rejection that you worry about. Okay? So the idea about injecting a tau and stem cell cell into a thing, you do not have to worry about rejection. You don't like embryonic stem cell, you inject that, you have to take anti uh, steroids and things like that to suppress uh, rejection. Okay, now become a very interesting thing come. Uh, most likely, I think the Nobel Prize is going to be given to this gentleman in a few years. Okay, in 2006, late 2006, I remember that I was in the airport going to, uh, uh, going to California for a meeting or something like that. This, uh, uh, and there's a magazine come out saying that uh, men make humans, uh, 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 fountain of you have been found. Okay, what, they, what Yamayaki from, I think Kyoto University, I think, from Japan, he used four genes, okay, four transcription factors, OP4, SOP2, CMAG, and uh, KELP4. Now, remember that how many genes that you have in your, uh, in, in, in your genome, in human genome? All right, biology majors, come on. 25,000 genes, okay? 25,000 genes have basically give you all the characteristics in your body, okay? And he take four of those genes, he can make the cell from a, they take a skin cell, expose those, transfect those four genes in them, they become embryonic stem cell. What happened? That means that they can reverse your aging process to your baby cells. That's incredible. Four cells out of 25,000 cells. Okay? Within a very short time, my, my dear friend, Jamie Thompson from, uh, from, uh, from Wisconsin, has said the same thing too. But he used, a, he used also four genes, but two of the genes are different which is a Lenox and, and, and Len28. They, they don't use CMAG and, C, uh, and KELP4. It turns out what happens, CMAG is a what? Come on, biology majors, proto-oncogenes. Okay, they, people that have proto-oncogenes, and you inject proto-oncogenes in the cell, the cell will become tumor. Okay, so Jamie Thompson avoid that. So his cells that he has had less tumor cells, had less formed tumor cells, but they still do. 
that is a basic scheme that you'll find. Okay? They can become anything you want. So basically, we can take an adult skin cell from your, from your arm, from your, from your leg, or things like that, and we can give you embryonic stem cell. But this is, this is a big price, because the big price was the fact that embryonic stem cell is better than adult stem cell. Okay? So automatically, an incredible amount of funding from NIH and things like this given to any people to do this kind of thing. So as soon as you do that, problem arise. Okay, new development. Pretty soon we find that all you need is OP4. Instead of 14, OP4 is all you need to transfect the cell to become things like that. means that one gene out of 25,000 genes in your body can make you from a, a 90 year old man to a, to a baby. Wow, that's incredible. Okay, so that basically you find something that's very important. Okay, now the thing that you have is come with a very uh, troublesome thing. Not trouble with something. By doing any kind of new things, you're going to have more. As soon as you answer one one problem, there are going to be more questions. Okay. So one of the things was so-called epigenetics. Epigenetics basically, okay, in your in, in your DNA, you have one set of genetic information that you tell you that this is who you are. But they are not. All those genes are not being expressed all the time. Okay? They're being selected. It's controlled by. Epigenetic, uh, genetic uh, 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 can be turned on. We respond to an environment. Now there are basically three different areas that we, we know that uh, constitute epigenetics. One is DNA methylation, adding a methyl group to the DNA, and the other one is histomorphication, which is a protein binding the DNA itself. By doing that, they bind to the DNA differently, so they will shut off that part of the genome. The other one is so called non-coding microRNA. The uh, I I hospital, uh, uh, Gary Yam, and then also uh, Richard have done a lot of those work. So I think that uh, get a chance to talk to those gentlemen. They can tell you a lot of this story about this. Why this is important? It turns out what happened was the fact that when people, in order to, to, to say that the iPS cell, the cell from adult stem cell to become embryonic stem cell, are similar to that of stem cell, you have to compare the two side by side, right? Two part four, four by four. You have to compare the two to saying that they're the same. By doing that, they find the epigenetic uh, 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 thing are totally uh, are quite different. Okay, and on top of that, they always do do one thing that surprised people was so-called epigenetic epigenetic memory, meaning that from an adult stem cell, they have a different set of of, of, of uh, epigenetic factors. So they, when they transfer into embryonic stem cell to iPS cell. They carry that memory, okay, and they also the mutation rate went up. They form cancer, so big time. That you have is a fake set. That means that iPS cell is not ready for prime time yet to be to be used like embryonic stem cell. Now this is a very common problem for what we call a, a, a new science. New science have to suffer some kind of growing pain. Okay, meaning that when they start to think, we'll find out there are many things that we have to challenge, we have to conquer before we can do that. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. People condemn them as a, as a big failure, it's not. It's just like any kind of product you see, you buy a new car, a new car come out from, from, from Ford or a special American car. Okay? So you'll guarantee you that within a year, they'll, they'll recall. <laughs> okay? So this is, what, this is one of them. Teratoma, okay, that you will find. This is a, 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 a so-called cold test. We know to show that your cells are using teratoma by injecting in a, in a not mice, meaning that uh, uh, a mice that have AIDS, basically. They have, uh, 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 they, they do that. Now, a paper just come out, a very important paper, actually was called by Michael yesterday, okay, is from, a stem, from Stanford, uh, Willen, okay, from the Stanford uh, Virginia Medicine Institute. They find one thing, they say, okay, now, the idea they have was very simple-minded. They, the, they take the idea from German study. The German study, what German study was embryonic uh, stem cell, what they do is they said, I cannot inject it in a human before forming into a toma. okay? So they make the cell become progenitor cells, to really commit it, okay? So they are saying that maybe in all, if the cell become uh, 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 poor potent, that is a curse. The curse is for their tumor. God is very nice to you because the thing was they are very fair. Okay, you have to, for any good deed you have bad, bad thing come with it. Okay, so what he did was the thing that he said it's a way to trans to make from adult stem cell to the tissue you want called direct transfer. 
direct, direct reprogramming. Okay? So they take the skin cell and they use two genes, basically. And they can transfer and make neuron. This is a functional neuron, meaning that they have action potential. They have all the things that are supposed to turn synapses. Okay? And on top of that, that means that they pack what happened to the iPS cell, okay? iPS cell saying that embryo cell, they go to embryo stem cell and then go back to become the cells you want. So you take a big dip and go back. Here, you go direct. So you save that procedure of going this, save time, okay? And the efficiency is 10 times better. Okay, now, if this is true, I'm sure it is, okay? This is the most wonderful thing, but this happened in mice, not in the human cell, okay? So what happened is the thing that any kind of new, any science require people to confirm it. And done in another lab, it cannot be, science you can be produced, bread magic you can, okay? So whether this is bread magic or not, it has to be do this. But the concept itself, pure potency, is maybe a curse, a lead to teratoma. It's a very important uh, 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 finding that they, they tell you. Nanotechnology. It's a catchword now. Okay, nanotechnology. Everybody talk about nanotechnology. Okay, one of the things that we are interested in very much was the fact that one of the things that caused a lot of problem in American molecular biology technology uh, is the fact that you use virus to transfer to transfect cells to transfer a new gene. Okay, and as long as you do transgenic animal and things like that, it's not a big problem. Do a transgenic human is something else. Okay, so as long as you use viruses and things like this, uh, no, FDA will not approve it. Okay, so people now have tried different things, uh, uh, people from Boston especially, okay. Uh, they actually use uh, nanoparticles or biopolymer that can actually do the same thing on virus to transfect DNA or gene into, into, into cell. Okay, so now you do not require a viral transfer. The efficiency is not very high. Okay, but they are up to about 40 to 50 percent instead of using nanoviruses, it could be 90 percent. Okay, so it's a matter of time they will do that. So we may be able to solve the problem of uh, a molecular transfer gene into another one by using this technology and get FDA approval. And also they can use a so called nanowire. Nanowire basically is they code the wire with all the DNA you want, put the cell in them, the virus just puncture and deliver the stuff, okay? So they may hurt a little bit, you put a band-aid on, it's okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Therapeutic approach, this is what I want to talk today, okay? There are two, they actually there are three different types. You can divide it in two. One is called cell-based tissue engineering, tissue engineering or tissue regeneration, or tissue, uh, 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 cell-based that means that they can inject the cell directly into the organ, which we have done already, and, and show that, okay? The other one is called scaffold-based uh, uh, tissue regeneration, meaning that to deliver the cell or deliver the damage uh, to, to repair, you require scaffold. Now, this is obviously very important for weight-bearing area, like bone, okay? You cannot have a damage when you inject the thing, you have no mechanical, the person cannot stand. So what you're doing, you make a, a, a biomaterial, a scaffold, they have a similar mechanical force, and then there are two basic areas that we look at, what's called bioresorptable or non-bioresorptable, okay? Meaning that bioresorptable one is, you put that in there, the tissue will uh, be absorbed. We get a lot of things like stone uh, 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 thing now for, for, for damage area, okay? So that is the two major areas. Now, what are they, okay? Cell-based regeneration, the goal is to replace damage area by, help, by transferring uh, healthy cells. The, the bone marrow trans, uh, transplant has been done for 50 years, so it's successful, okay? Now, what do, now I'm going to be more personal thing. What do we do as the University of Miami, okay? And three, about five years ago, and then we decided that, well, long before that, we, we already talked about having a so-called a stem cell institute, meaning that we specialize in stem cell uh, therapy, okay? So we finally get enough money and then build a new building and then done in two, uh, two, two and a half years ago. And this is a new building. And then our eight and nine four, eight and nine four belong to us. Okay, that we have about approximately 90,000, uh, 110, 109,000 square feet of research space. 
and con also, con also consists of CCMP facility, meaning that we can actually manufacture material or isolate a cell under the, the strictest guideline. Okay. Now, three years later, we run out of space. Okay, so the deed that promises uh, another uh, 150,000 feet of space, uh, but he haven't come through yet, so we are waiting. Now, we follow a very strict clinical development or novel therapy, meaning that in order from, there's a very catchy word nowadays, from bench to bedside, a translational research, as uh, Professor Fong had talked about uh, with me a couple of times. What is translational thing? Meaning they apply basic finding from the laboratory into, into, into a clinical setting. What do we need to do? Okay, you look at the basic sign, uh, uh, finding that you have. Okay, first, you show preclinical pre uh, pre observation. The first part is basic laboratory research, meaning the test tube kind of thing. Then you try it on, 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 on rat and, and, and things like that. You, the, reason you, the reason you use rat and mouse because they're cheap, not because they're such a wonderful animal to work with. Okay. So you do that, you find that you have enough building, then you can go to FDA and apply saying that the efficacy is very good in animal study. Can I try a clinical trial? They, if you have enough good, good data, they will allow you a phase one trial. A phase one trial meaning that an open label trial. Meaning that in a, in a true uh, clinical study, you are a double blind study, meaning that the donor, I mean, when you inject to somebody or something, uh, the control and the thing, you don't know who will receive control uh, or receive a, a stem cell. Okay. In this case, open label, that means you know exactly what you're getting. And then is to monitor whether the stem cell that we inject cause any problem that you have. Okay. It's a very important thing that you have. Now, once you get that, you begin to understand what we have and come back and modify our basic technique. Now, I will show you a situation that here really surprised us for the finding of our original finding of stem cell basic research, that we were not wrong, but we really underestimate a lot of things. This is our director. We, you know, like all the upcoming universities, that we, you know, we bought our, our best faculty from, from, from good university like Harvard. So he, he's from Johns Hopkins. So he, a young faculty, very famous faculty. He was one that, that started the animal study. Now his original study is very simple. He take, he have a pig model that he can induce heart attack in a pig, okay? He take a male pig and a female pig. He induced heart attack in female pig. Not that he didn't like female, but he just, there's a reason for it, okay? <laughs> then he take, he take a, a bone marrow stem cell from male pig and then inject in a female pig, okay? Now, the reason it does that, then he can follow that path of those stem cells by looking at the Y chromosome. Because the donor is, has contained Y chromosome, right? the sex chromosome, a human, uh, a man has XY, okay? They look at Y chromosomes. If the stem cell in the damaged area, the cell that we pair have Y chromosome, that means they come from the male pig, the donor, okay? A very true kind of thing, okay? So, this is the data he got. Okay. Oh, so because of the success he has, so we have, this slide is a little bit ahead of time. So we were basically so successful in this now. We are now so-called specialized stem. I gotta try stem cell in my eyes so I can improve my eyesight. That doesn't help. Okay. So called specialized uh, uh, cell trans uh, uh, center for uh, cell therapy. Okay, this is a team. We get $49 million from, from NIH to establish that, the enlist patient to, be to do for things. They are a bunch of cardiologists. They are the ones that have the, which we have uh, recruited from Johns Hopkins. So we recruit patients that have heart attack and then look at the effect of injecting stem cell in them to see if they cure stem cell, okay, on the original pig model, uh, jo uh, Josh, the, the, the director, I find that by injecting male, male, male uh, bone marrow stem cell into a female pig that heart attack, in 13 weeks, they recover. That's incredible. That means that you don't have to do open heart surgery, you don't have to do a lot of things. First, injecting stem cell didn't replace that. In human study, is what do we know? Okay, 
Okay, now this is a new, one of the new things that we have invented from the, from the group. Was instead of original using an injection to do this, they actually have a new gadget now, that in this one here, that you have, okay? They can actually deliver the cell from your, from your uh, uh, portal range all the way to the, to, the, uh, to the heart and inject it directly into the heart by using M uh, MRI, okay? So you don't need the open heart at all, just the whole and inject the thing. And this way, you don't go through the lung. There will be no stem cell in the lung They'll directly into that. It's a very big improvement. So this is one of the inventions I'll talk about on Thursday for intellectual property. This makes a lot of money for this. Okay, this is the first day that he has. This is with the pig uh, still. Okay, with the pig that he has by injecting stem cell within 13 weeks, the size of the damage area, okay, this is control, this is MSC, the mesocom stem cell, have decreases. Okay, decreases. And then the other thing too that you have that indeed the thickness and then also everything has improved. Now the new state it has is more, is really coming as a surprise, okay? So original technique that you have, now this is a, again using Y chromosome technique that you have. When they inject the stuff, they find that the cell did graft in the damage area, like we expected. So you inject the stem cell, you find Y chromosome attached to the damage area. That means that's the first thing first. If they do not attach to the damage area, you have nothing, right? So the stem cell means don't get grab. The second one was interesting in the sense that okay, thank you. See, that's why we need students. <laughs> They're lot smarter than we are. And you look at that itself. Okay, one was the fact that using Y chromosome, they find the Y chromosome actually engraft and differentiate into. Uh, tropomy tropomycin, which be become a heart cell itself, okay, a mus heart muscle cells. Now, the other thing that was surprising enough, they also become differentiated kind of for not work. Okay, so you look at this cell, the garden four, and all this kind of thing like this, that means that the cell actually become kind of myocyte. Now, but the interesting thing about this here, you got, oh. The surprising thing is, all of a sudden you find the Y chromosome in the blood vessel. What's that mean? Blood vessel is endoderm. These are mesenchymal stem cells. They have no business to be in endoderm. Okay? In, a, in the original definition of mesenchymal stem cell, they can, they can become bone cartridge and, 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 and heart muscle. Okay? And then and in some special case, they become neurons. That's why they got multi potent cells. But they should not become endothelial cells. Those are cell cultures, almost a Bible. If a student come to me, do his, do his final exam of stem cell biology, and he said, Ms. Cameron can become endotherm, he failed. <laughs> okay? And now I have, to eat, eat, I have to eat my word. Okay? There, you find them. That means that in an animal, in a micro environment, the stem cell become funny thing, okay? This is really a very important issue that you have. And the other thing too, is very surprising. Even after 18 weeks, there's a large, 60, 70, 76% of the stem cell that you have remain undifferentiated. Why that's important? That means that the, that the tissue itself basically keep a vessel bar of cell to be pray, to keep replacing, re replacing the thing, okay? And they also put, keep producing a cytokine. The last thing, okay, that you have sickly cells. Sickly cells is local cell, local heart cell, okay, sickly cell. They, they do not have any, they do not see any Y chromosome, and yet they increase like, like mad, okay? The total amount of sickly cell increase. They are not from the same cell you injected. That means that the same cell, in this case, did not participate in the CK cell. It is really the stem cell that secretes the cytokine, induces the surrounding cell to replace the thing. Okay? So to summarize what we find, the latest one we find now, the, the mesenchymal stem cell not only uh, become cardiomyocyte, they also become vascular tissue too. And they also remain a large vessel bar to produce cytokine to repair. It's a continual process. It's almost a mini pump of cytokine. Okay. Now, the three phenomena are the clinical, clinical issue. They improve the blood flow. 
that also the regional, uh, improved regional contraction decreases scar size, okay? And that increase in rejection volume. So literally, this patient now are on the way to recovery from heart attack, okay? This is from human study, okay? Now, now that we blow the horn how good therapy is, but they are not the only answer. The other one is so-called scarful guy tissue regeneration. That means we try to see, leak, uh, 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 see, uh, see some of the cells in the scaffold-based material. The scaffold base depends on the engineering of the tissue itself in bone, your porous material. In some, some tissue like cartilage, you basically have very, uh, like a gel, okay? So the cell that you have seen are quite different. So the making scaffold, it depends on the tissue you're going to use, they have. You have two choices. The choice is either make the thing biodegradable or non-biodegradable. Non Okay, biodegradable is wonderful. The idea was the fact that at the end of the day, they will be reabsorbed by the cell. You can only re, uh, be replaced by the, the cell producing them. Okay? The shortcoming is what? The shortcoming, you have to time the thing right. The secretion of your local tissue, new tissue, equal to the rate of degradation of your material. Okay? Nobody's that good. Okay? We, can, we can gamble a little bit by slowly uh, by, by error on the, on, on the right side, meaning that the, 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 the other one is non-biodegradable, like a, a steel bar or a ceramic a, a, a head and things like this, okay? So, but then you also have their own problem itself. Now, the most interesting that you have is the fact that the choice of biomaterial, what, do you, what are the choice you have? What are the characteristics you have? The selection of biomaterial plays a key role, okay? The biomaterial, the biomaterial first, in the old days, like in the uh, days of, of George Washington day, you find his teeth are made of wood and lead, okay? Part of, they, were, they were kidding the fact that George Washington died because of lead poisoning, because it has teeth because of lead. Okay, that's what they have. His bone actually has lead in, in his bone, okay? So the biomaterial itself has to be safe. It has to index the local tissue to repair. It also has to decide all this supports new cell growth and tissue, and also attachment, a subsequent cell uh, 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 increase. And the, the latest issue is how to guide the cell to replace, okay? They actually now, we take biomaterial and actually attach growth factor in them. So the growth factor help the cell to interact with the, uh, 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 the attach and grow them. So we speed up the process, okay? So the biomaterial come a long way. Now this is a technique that we use, okay, because the different material using slightly different things. There's a, I'm sure that some of your, some of the colleagues in, in, in biomaterial or uh, engineer, engineering, mechanical engineering people may use it, so-called electrical spinning technique. This is a machine built by a student, okay. My student, because we, were, we are very poor, so we make the student build all the machine, okay. So the machine itself is very simple-minded, okay. So it has to be a, a, a thing that you have as a part of a solution, okay. A current go through, and then the heat melt the thing, and then we will a high voltage thing that you have, and they can spin, they can make all sorts of fiber. How the, the size of the fiber, how fast you spin it, how small the hole is, and that kind of thing. So you can make all sorts of different kind of thing that you have, okay? Okay, you can make up uh, the material by uh, uh, gelatin bead, which is uh, the nature collagen, okay? So you'll find something like this. You can make two, two, you can make three dimensional model of thickness. So we can create all sorts of shape and size that you have. Okay, one of the ideas that we have, uh, one of my students, uh, a PhD candidate uh, for a PhD thesis, is to make a patch, okay, to, to uh, when you deliver, when you do what they have done with uh, Josh pig model, the heart attack, instead of injecting them, we use the band-aid. Okay, the band-aid, put a cell attached to the band-aid, attached to the damage area, and then just deliver the cells, okay? This is what he did, okay? A POGA material. So he had make the stuff that basically like this, okay? This material here. In, two, in within a very short period of time, two days, this is cell culture plate compared with uh, fibrin, compared with PLGA from the disc. The PLGA seemed to be very nice, and then fibrin, gelatin have very little cells in them, okay? But by seven days, they all caught up, meaning that little patch that, that we have made is full of cells that we have. Then we go ahead and have, as soon as they get enough cells, 
we make those cells become carbon dioxide. Now, this is done in vitro. Now, the, remember that what, what the animal model they use, they inject the cell and let the cell do what they're supposed to do. Here, we do an in vitro study, make the cell grow in them, and then induce them to become carbon dioxide before we attach the damage area. Okay, so we do all the hard work that the cell can benefit from this. But we also may have short, short change to cell, basically. So, and then you look at JNP, the cell, the cell number increase, okay? This cell, Jesus. And all of a sudden that, by doing that, we can actually induce a cell to become carnium outside. All the markers that we have, induce them, okay? We can pick them. That means that he, this, little, uh, this graduate student has successfully in two years have built a little patch that, can, that make cardiovascular in them. So we're going to compare that with, with Josh animal study. Compare injection of the same cell, let them do their job, and compare the one that we have man-made patch and do this, and see which one's better. Okay? So we, have, we don't know the result yet. So I, I'm sure that we want, uh, Josh here will not talk to us. I'm sure that he will not want to talk to them. So, <laughs> so that's where we are at this stage of the game. Now, the other thing, too, by a very simple technique, a freeze-dry uh, technique, we can create a situation like bone, which is like on the material that you have. Can, depends on the temperature that we have. We can make pores of different sizes. When you take a bone, you crack them, there are a lot of holes in them, okay? So by doing that, we can create a situation like this, and we can see cells in them. And this is for bone research, okay? And then induce them. If we find a very short, uh, day 21, they start to measure alkaline phosphatase, which is the beginning of bone cell formation. Okay, uh, 35 days. Okay, they make all, all that, but then also they sustain 35 days. Uh, uh, Elsim uh, red, which is measurement of mineralization, the calcium phosphate, because bone has to be mineralized. So we are telling you that by using this technique, the free dry technique that we have, we can actually make. A, 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 a piece of bone, um, a bonus material, okay? That you have, this is bone, basically. Then you have mineral, you have a cell that you have, okay? Now, then we have told you about the, the new, new changes, new advance in the cell therapy as well as the big, uh, uh, as well as the biomaterial story. Then the next, what a challenge that we have, okay? One of the things is the dangers in horizon. Uh, the, 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 uh, the black side is winning, okay? It was the fact that, like everything else, the moment you talk about profit, okay, then you have people talk about stem cell, you see some company making a cosmetic, cosmetic material from stem cell extract, and, 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 and they are hospital in, 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 in China, in Europe, in US, and South America, saying that if, you, if uh, the traditional medicine cannot cure you, you come here, we'll, we'll, you need a new head, we can we'll make a new head for you. Okay, so people actually believe that because they are out out, out option. Okay, some of the people that you have, so they go that, but then they end up become a, a lot of problem. So the story is now there is a big challenge saying that how do we regulate this kind of uh, tech, uh, this kind of uh, 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 a problem because it ultimately it get bad name for people that like that they do for the traditional way of doing things. Okay, so one of the things that you have is the things that uh, your vitamin or uh, uh, or cosmetic agent, the damage is very small. But for people that have disease, if you follow the traditional uh, medicine, you may get cured. But you go to those places, you may damage yourself, and the, uh, you lost the opportunity to use the traditional medicine to save you. Okay. But how do we control that? So one of the things that we have done is the fact that, indeed, that we have an international society of stem cell research. Okay. That set of guidelines. What is, when you go to see those so-called clinics, you have to look at the guideline. The guideline is telling you that what is acceptable, not is, not is acceptable. Like all the clinical things that we do, we have to look at for CTMP facility uh, uh, method, meaning that good manufacturing practice, we can tell you exactly how the cell being made, who make them, what they, okay? What quality control do we have? Some of those clinics, you don't you know what they, what they have, okay? So requirement is the fact that they have to do that, and the government has to step in to find those things. And the, but the problem is, 
every country has their own rule. Nobody wants to be told by, by a bunch of eggheads like us to tell them that, uh, that, that a government cannot do better things than, than, than so-called scientists. They're, they're crazy people anyway. They have crazy hair. They're walking around in a white lab coat. So that's a problem that we have. So the things that are up to us convince people, saying that, look, this has become a danger because of the thing that you have. Okay? Now, a good example would be uh, somebody from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, Arizona just get, uh, uh, get, get caught. This guy had been making money by selling things to people that stem cell source, because most of the, most of the stem cell uh, are clinic, they don't make their own stem cell. They, they, he is supplying those guys. Okay? This guy is making millions of dollars. Okay? He get caught, he find some amount, $300,000. There's no justice. This guy is rich. This woman is rich, okay? And, but the thing was, he had been doing, that's a lot of become very ill, sick. So he put, you know, these are the things that we had to deal with. So I think, as scientists, as the people that we have, we have to become much more uh, conscious about what is going on and become an active role to, our, to tackle our own science. By saying that what is acceptable, what is not acceptable. Okay, these are my students that this year. Okay, this year's student is particularly tall. Okay, that you have uh, Peter is a football player. We make him bend his knee. He's 6'5", 300 pounds. So uh, nobody say any bad thing about him. He will pick up one hand. Okay, and then all these guys are 6'2 or above. Okay, so here I am high in the back. I have to stand on, 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 on the thing about how foot tall. I barely can see me, you know, so. And then uh, poor Veronica and then uh, uh, things like this. So this, she's a, uh, my new graduate student. She works on neurons. And then uh, this is my new postdoc. And then we, ha we are recruiting a, 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 a young uh, postdoc from uh, Dr. Pang's lab, Michael, to join us soon. We will put him here. <laughs> OK. So thank you. So uh, I would, you know, I would get uh, over answer and uh, keep it. Thank you, thank you, Professor Cho, for the interesting and enlightening talk. Please be seated on stage. I'm sure that there will be some questions on the floor. May I now call upon Professor Christopher Leung, moderator of today's lecture, uh, who has obviously come up to the stage, and host a question and answer session for us. Thank you, Professor Leung. I believe the audience would agree with me that the, the lecture is indeed uh, inspiring and mind-opening. Um, while we're still waiting for the questions from the audience, I would like to start by the first uh, question asking Professor Zhang in his view about, now we, we have technologies to isolate the identified stem cells, and we have technology even to differentiate the stem cell into a more specialized cell type. Um, but the, the challenges and the difficulties we have today is when we perform the stem cell-based therapy, um, we inject the cells and even can, with biomaterials, can construct certain uh, tissue. Uh, but when we implant or when we inject this stem cells derived therapy into a human being, we have difficulty understanding how these cells integrate into the host tissue to form a functioning unit. And, and what will be your view in the, this perspective and, and how and what are the areas of research in the coming years to solve these issues? Before I come here, I actually asked Chris to ask me an easy question. He asked me a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the question, the question actually is a, uh, an exceptionally good question because that is really the practical part about from bench to bedside, meaning that when we have a tech observation, tech scientific observation, we put the poor physician at risk, basically saying that, okay, now you show me the magic. I, I, I can do that in the lab animal. You do what you have to do to us, okay? I think the very first thing is the fact that what we call engraftment. If the, th if the cell do not engraft in the damage area, it's the end of the story, okay? Now, 
The other thing too was after engraftment, what are the things we can follow? So we have to have technique that what you are I, I most admire. You did a lot of good things, but a particular field that I admire is imaging, which we need imaging. We get imaging live animal instead of kill the animal and look at, hey, you know, how, how, how are you doing? It's a million die, you know. <laughs> that doesn't work, okay? So I think ima uh, imaging on live tissue to follow the progress of the damage area is important. Then you know when to do this. Or to, to, uh, so we have to ask the, the imaging and assay uh, the progress whether it's successful or not successful to do this, okay? I think the most important thing is have a so-called for the guideline of clinical trial, meaning that phase one, phase two, phase three in the United States is a very clear cut uh, definition what you have to do, okay? Now I think that every time when you inject cell into a micro environment, you really have no control what they do, okay? They, they do every crazy thing, I mean like, by coming stem cell to actually form a blood vessel, which is not heard of in, 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 a, in a test tube, okay? And yet it does, okay? So there are interactions that we really do not understand, but at the same time tell us that there are things that we have to be much more aware of to try it in human, okay? The, ha the, the human safety comes first and last, okay? So I think that the question is well asked. I think the imaging technique and graphing is important, imaging is most important to, to allow us to do that. And the other thing too is development of biomaterial. Because a lot of the things we have, just like that's why it start beside the, the so-called the bandage uh, technique. Okay, that means that we can bend it, we can peel it off, and things like this, okay? That means that we have control the cell being carbon myocyte first before we inject the thing. But then the dynamic, like we showed before, that what's so good about the injection of the stem cell, and then they have keep a vessel on of undifferentiated stem cells, keep producing cytokine, and they uh, did themselves do some other thing. How can we do that? Okay, so, but for every new science, there could be a period of growing pain, meaning that we don't know enough to, have, to, to do this, okay? So this is a traditional kind of cry for action to NIH or, or, or things like that for us to get more money, and they ignore us, obviously. <laughs> No, but the thing was, those are the things that we had to be more patient. Things like that, cannot, it's not like, like development of a, a, a small molecule or antibiotics that you have. This is totally new technology. Just imagine that now, the, the, uh, this whole uh, uh, cardiovascular uh, management now are much cheaper now when you pull this technique. You do have no one set heart surgery, you do a lot, save a lot of things. So the ultimate goal is going to be very important. But then we have to be more patient to, to kind of uh, 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 keep repeating experiment, keep understanding that. But I think that, to me, I'm looking for your help is the imaging of live tissue without damage to the patient. So we can follow them, then I say, okay, now, uh, maybe this, this person needs something help or something going very bad. So we have to go in and much more aggressively uh, 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 do treatment. So I hope that answers your question. Sir. Right. We have helpers with microphones along the aisle, so do we have any questions from, from the audience? Please feel free to raise up your hand and we will have someone to pass a microphone to you. Those are our plants. They're all from eye hospital. <laughs> so thank you, Herman, for such a my question is, um, now with the advance of the direct reprogramming, do you think the definition of uh, pluripotency has to be redefined? And my second question is, um, do, what, how is the prospect of, or the future of cell banking? Okay, good. Uh, let me ask the first question first, okay? Uh, because it's, to me, direct programming is, a, is really, so far there are three papers to come out. They can do that, okay? The direct programming seems very simple and gets such a good yield. Remember the original data from uh, iPS cells, they, they use mouse cells and use human cells, okay? Yamayaki have saying that basically they are equally efficient. I can tell you one thing, they're not. Human is about 10 times, 20 times harder. We spent a bundle in US Miami uh, to hire somebody that is supposed to be iPS cell expert. We ended up firing the woman because he could not do human cells. 
okay? And she is not the only one, okay? People have genomic institute do the same thing to look at genetic diseases, hopefully. They, and then uh, people from, uh, 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 from Harvard, Stem Cell Institute, they try to, ice, they try to study so-called inheritable disease by genuine that kind of thing to look for biomarker for, for do that. And they find human cells are notorious, so difficult to do, okay? But direct programming sounds so simple. And sometimes I'm a typical uh, pessimist. Anything sounds so good, it cannot be that good, <laughs> okay? And I'm not saying that they're bad scientists. I'm just saying I, I like to see more more reputation by people to do that. Now, cell banking actually uh, already uh, 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 already a mature kind of thing now. Okay, that you have. I'm sure the people that take uh, take uh, the uh, the harbor uh, what you call it, the tunnel. Okay, then you see all the cells that the, uh, your fat, your, your your baby cells and this kind of stuff. Your your fat cell to store them and things like this. Now the big problem with, with cell banking is two things. Uh, there's no guarantee, say for uh, embryon, uh, so uh, cold blood is a very common one now, meaning when your baby was being born, you take cold blood and store them in the bank, okay? So what guarantee do you have, okay? That your kid, when they need those cells, 10 years down the line, 20 down the line, most business nowadays fail in five, 10 years. So, they, it costs you fifteen hundred dollars to sort this, to get the cell from the hospital to the, to, to isolate to steal. Uh, so, costs you in the U.S. I don't know the price here. Maybe cheaper or, or maybe more expensive. Costs you two hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars for liquid nitrogen. Okay, but a lot of those companies went out of business. Then where in the hell are you going to get those? Okay, so I, I I'm always long long term effect you have. And the other thing too, you may never need it. Okay, new technology may come, in such that. Uh, uh, by the time, hopefully, your kid never use them. Just like, just like my father used to say, he hate life insurance. I said, why? He said, just imagine that if I had to collect, I'm not collecting them, and you are. <laughs> okay. So he said, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna enrich your pocket. You know, I die, I die. Okay. So I said, boy, I, I don't talk to my father anymore. So, <laughs> so that is, the, that is, that is, that was the, the cell banking. Now there is a new hope. UK actually was the first one that uh, the UK government actually have start to control the cell banking business, and it's run by the government. Okay, so I would I would like to see that, and and NIH does that too. Okay, so there are two possibilities that you do that. Okay, I'm working with a company now to store the dental cell that we have. Okay, the save a tooth uh, uh, foundation that we have. So, but at the same time too, I I. I told between here and I, I said, okay, you know, uh, you guys couldn't make it. They said, well, every year, because the thing was for those people uh, uh, work on IP uh, part of it, okay, most company, the first time you raise money is easy, but the second time is something else. You have to show progress, you have to like this. So a lot of companies fail five to 10 years, okay? And so it, it is a problem. I, I hope the government will take over to do that, okay? so. Uh, I'm Democrat, so I always like government. So, <laughs> do we have yeah, other question? questions from the audience? I just want to have a show of hand. How many of you here are staff working in a lab or in a clinic? So, uh, and and how many of you those working in the lab has research projects related to stem cells? Wow, so we, we have quite a number of people here. I expect you will have questions and, and, and <laughs> develop that down, because this is a very unique opportunity for you. As soon as I get out, I'm sure some people are gonna ask me something. <laughs> like I said, I mean, you know, I come, I come back to Hong Kong in the summer for two months, okay? Uh, I, you know, I have a visiting professorship at Hong Kong University, but Professor Pang always somehow managed to, to captivate, to, to, to imprison me for, for one day a week to, in <laughs> eye hospital. So if you have any question you want to ask me or, or work with me, just call him. You know, he's my manager. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure that one day that Hong Kong you're gonna send him a bill. <laughs> right, before we have the next question, I have another one. Now, we, um, can you enlighten us how many clinical trials are ongoing 
uh, related to stem cell therapy. And what is your perspective in the next decade? What stem cell therapy would be the, the most promising one? The safe bet is going to be adult stem cell because we have been proven beautiful efficacy and beautiful safety issue. Okay, because the thing was a lot of the work being done so far is not just, you know, like uh, the government, uh, U.S. The Department of Defense, okay, have selected uh, Wake Forest University Medical School to be the center of regenerative medicine. They get $80 million a year, okay, to, and they actually hand make a, 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 a tissue for you, a bladder, or things like this, for an incredible amount of money, but the thing was they can do that, okay. So especially now with the, all the soldiers returning from all the war, and for me, I, I work for, I got a, 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 a career scientist award paying my, part of my salary from, uh, from the Department of Defense, the Veteran Affairs, okay? So I see all these uh, soldiers coming back, minus, minus arm or, or deep muscle wound, okay? It's incredible, deep muscle wound, if you use cell to contain a very high level of nesting, they will be paid beautifully. Okay, so that will be a, a new future for deep muscle wound that we, we talk about. So I think that thousand stem cell, if I have to bet one, and they don't want to bet, but I think we'll, I, I'll bet on this one to do that. The other one, I would say that eventually, the embryonic stem cell is going to be uh, uh, the next uh, superstar. The reason for that is anytime you manipulate things, like IPS cell or direct things, you are basically rely on biotechnology, one of the things that you always worry about in insertion gene in a different chromosome. Because when you insert gene, there is no, you, have, you have to make sure that in your chromosome cell, the gene align in different places. Okay, when you insert new gene into the cell, there's no guarantee those cells are being expressed in a new area, okay? I think that if people don't think about this. You talk about molecular biology, they're God. You know, they say, oh, I can do this, I can I'm transfecting this and this. I said, my God, you know, they are like a tryptophan, a, a tryptophan uh, uh, operon. There are five genes that you, you, you require. In bacteria, they line up all together. In human, they are from four different chromosomes. And yet, they make tryptophan beautifully. That means that there's a signal for them to line up all those genes to, to, make, uh, to make the thing coordinated. We don't understand that yet, okay? When you inject new, new thing in there, that's why you look at all the iPS cells and the thing that you talk about, 10% efficiency, 10, 15% efficiency, 2% efficiency, okay? Some of them because of things that they're going to silent gene in certain areas that they're not being expressed, okay? I think for the molecular biologists, they are, they are homework to do, okay, that, you, that they have. But nevertheless, they will say never, always say maybe, okay? So, but my bet would be embryonic stem cell is already here, okay? The trick now is to make them become a lineage committed cell. Then you can, you can transplant. So I'm, I'm rooting for Geron, I'm rooting for advanced cell tissue to tell us positive results. And then we can go from there, okay? And ethical issue I cannot solve because the thing was, no matter how you look at it, uh, my argument always have been uh, medicine itself is already in many ways uh, counteract the act of God, okay? You're supposed to die, you take medicine, you get well. So God supposed, is supposed to die, but then you somehow will help you to do that, okay? So you really have, have ruined his divine plan for you to die early, <laughs> okay? So I, I look at that as something that, uh, the, the ethics of the society change for people, okay? Uh, five years ago, 10 years ago in the U.S., you are gay, uh, you, you cannot serve, uh, don't ask, don't, don't, uh, 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 don't answer, that kind of thing. Okay, nowadays it's okay. So the society changed with the, each, each year they change. Uh, our ethics are so-called normal uh, change. So I'm not too concerned about the ethical issue for the time being, because I think that sooner or later, uh, there is something like, for the, you know, there are uh, good outweigh evil. Okay, uh, and things like this, and you know, for the better of saving human or let them die, what your choice? If you have your your kid required and we want them to transplant, and you're Catholic, and don't tell me you're gonna say let your kid die. Okay, sooner or later is when when the shoes fall on you, you do different thing. Okay, so yes. And your stem cell had big potential. Do you think? Uh, in the future, say at the end of the day, uh, ten, 10 years later, we can overcome the risk of 
uh, having tumor when we inject the embryo stem cell in patient? They did already. They did it. What they did is they make the cell become a progenitor cell first. By doing that, like the like the spinal cord injury, what they do, they take the embryo stem cell and make them progenitor cells, and then the animal that they inject to do not form tumor. So okay. FDA actually allowed them now to recruit patients to try it on human. Now, we don't have those data yet for human, but for animal, at least it, it works, okay? But that, like everything else, it's gonna take time. So I'm not too concerned about the technical kind of thing. Like the other, the other thing they have, that Gary asked the same question too, is so-called direct programming, meaning that you take that and avoid that, 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 that poor potency state. Maybe poor potency is the curse. Okay, so there are ways to bypass the questions that you have. Okay, the, the main thing is make the cell become committed to the cell. They cannot become anything but the neuron. They cannot become anything but the liver cells. Then they don't have a chance to become a tumor. Okay, in, in, like I said, animal and cell culture, we can do that. We don't know human yet. So do we have one last question from the audience? Well, for a student, you still get me on Thursday night. If not, uh, I'll conclude the section and, and let's give thank to Professor Jung once again for his excellent uh, lecture this evening. Thank you very much for your attention. And, uh, thank you, Professor Chung and Professor Leung again. To express the college's appreciation with prepared souvenirs of both the speakers and the moderator, May I now call upon Professor K.P. Fong, Head of United College, and Professor K.C. Lam, Chairperson of the College's Distinguished Visiting Scholar Committee, to, represent, to present the souvenirs. Professor Fong and Professor Lam, please. Firstly, to our, to our Distinguished Visiting Scholar, Professor Herman Chiang. Then, to Professor Christopher Leung, more director of today's lecture. Thank you, Professor Fong and Professor Lam. On behalf of United College, we thank you again for attending this lecture and wishing you all have a nice evening. <laughs>